welcome to Montreal Rocks. Today we have a special guest. We have Sid Carter West, all the way from Vancouver, joining us in our studio today. Sid, so thankful to have you join us. Thank you for having me, Randall. It's good to be here. So you're basically a singer-songwriter and a poetic outcast, according to Twitter. Yes, Explain yeah. Explain the um, for us. Yeah, so actually before um, I, I found the name Sid Carter West uh, through my both sides of my family, um, I was originally called Poetic Outcast. Um, I actually have it tattooed on my arm here. Uh, I've always felt like an outcast ever since I was little. A lot of people didn't really understand my quirks and uh, my certain personality. Uh, a lot of people actually thought in high school that I was a vampire because I wore a lot of dark clothes, super pale. Uh, I'm naturally really blonde. So people were convinced. Um, but yeah, I always thought no one really understood how I thought. I thought I felt things really deeply and intensely. Um, I would write a lot, a lot of poems. I felt that's where I connected most with my emotions and myself is through words, through music. Um, ever since I was very little, music was always in my life. Uh, I started singing technically at age two before I could speak. My mother- In the uh, car, right? Yeah, she would hear me in the car humming in perfect pitch. And she basically thought, okay, so I need to take my daughter to some, some singing lessons. So when I was old enough, which apparently was six, uh, I started music uh, lessons with my teacher, a local teacher here, and it just never stopped since. At age 12, I went into opera, which was very surprising. I never really thought I would be going into opera. I was really into contemporary music. I wrote my own songs. I loved poetry, um, hence the poetic part. Uh, but yeah, and I dove into opera for some reason. My singing teacher at the time who was kind of taking me into classical training, she recommended that I see this teacher in the North Shore, uh, which is North Vancouver, where I was living and see this, uh, just meet up with this opera trainer, um, Ingrid Suderman, who is currently still to this day, my singing coach. Um, what happened was that apparently she interviews <laughs> her students before she takes them in. And apparently she doesn't take them um, under the age of 15. So technically I wasn't really supposed to start training with her at age 12, but I met up with her anyway. Uh, my dad came she said to my dad, I don't usually take 12 year olds, but we'll see how this goes. I sang a song for her. And then eventually she turned to my dad and said, okay, so she's going to be my student. <laughs> wow. uh, so yeah, ever since then, I, I've been with her. She's still my, my teacher to this day. I see her often for, you know, healthy vocal lessons and, uh, making sure that my voice is in a good place because that's really important to me. That's something I've always valued is how to sing in a healthy way um, and make sure that my voice doesn't end up ruined. You know, I've heard these stories from Adele and Sam Smith and Miley Cyrus where they had to go to the hospital for it's vocal. real damage if you don't do it right. You yeah, they had to go to the hospital to get uh, their vocal cords fixed. And um, I don't want to end up like that. So... I see my singing teacher weekly and especially during gigs and stuff or recording sessions that I'm doing. Uh, I see her just to make sure that my voice is in a good place. So, but it's amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing how following your passion and really focusing on what you love to do, especially at a young age, it really leads you to a positive place. Um, I was in a dark place for a while as a young teenager who didn't know who she was, but I found that music was always there to give me purpose. 
and to give me a consistent path to follow, even if I'm in a dark place. It gave me a really nice outlet to <laughs> express myself and uh, know that I'm not alone. And I ended up finding some amazing people that I'm working with. And, you know, my producer that I work with now is like my songwriting soulmate. And um, I have these amazing bandmates that I work with often. Uh, Pat Stewart, who's actually uh, Brian Adams' drummer, is my drummer now. So I, I'm pretty honored that I get to work with such amazing, talented artists just because I continued to follow something that I really love doing. It's, qu it's quite amazing. I'm, I'm really grateful that I've always had that, that place to go to when I was feeling a little lost. So yeah, that's the, that's the story. I, and the I don't know what I'm doing here. You're making my job pretty redundant. You could interview <laughs> yourself. Uh, so much to break down in what you just said. I want to go back to that point uh, about being different as a child. Um, yeah. How thankful we are that through age, we get this perspective that sometimes the things that make us odd or make us stand out end up being our superpowers later on in life. Make, 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 yeah. Those are maybe the most important things in our life. and they, they make us who we are. They make us beautiful in a way because we, we are different instead of yeah. just being like everybody else absolutely uh that's a really good point randall and i fully agree i am a firm believer through all of the battles that i have been through uh through the successes um making it through all the hard times i've definitely have come to realize the power and the strength that can actually come from a weakness and i think this is what mainly my upcoming album and my single the ugly truth coming out on november 3rd uh it, it, this is what it's about it's about taking what you thought was a weakness what you thought couldn't be fixed what you thought would ruin you and your life and creating it into something beautiful and giving what you thought had no purpose giving it purpose and letting the light shine through and showing that you can turn anything that you think is dark, you can turn it into a positive if you really put your intention out there. And I really feel this inner fire, which is, <laughs> as you can see the artwork um, for my single, yeah. The Ugly Truth. Yeah, I. that's pretty much about the fire of my personality, um, my, my fiery heart. Um, what I thought would ruin connecting with people, what I thought would, you know, take me nowhere in life. You know, I, I, I have a very fiery personality and for a while I had to learn how to tone it down. For a while I had to learn how to try to be someone that I'm just not, you know? And I always thought that this fiery personality would not do anything for me, but through music, through many life lessons, I've learned that I've turned it into something beautiful. I can put it into my art. I can put it into my emotions and my poetry. You know, it, it can turn into something that I'm proud of. I have two confessions. <laughs> so I'm going to share one now and I'm going to keep one in the pocket for later. There you go. <laughs> my first confession is I would not say that I enjoy country music. So I took this interview because I am willing to expand my musical taste. I figured I even have a playlist on Spotify called Dipping My Toes Into Country. And uh, I figured I have to kind of explore this world to better understand it, to better appreciate it. But I put on the single that uh, was sent to me. Uh, and I just love the start, just that guitar, like, and then I just pictured myself, uh, it, you know, in a roadhouse somewhere off Road 66. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a Harley. I have a Honda 500 Rebel. But let's just say I, 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 I dress it up like a Harley. I'd probably be there at my Harley uh, and just enjoy that music and just have a, a great old time. And it was Love. a fun song. I, I really enjoyed it despite my reservations. So this is me just saying 
give me a chance. I want to understand <laughs> this part of the world musically. Uh, but I, I, it did start off with a really good vibe and I really, I really, really enjoyed it. That's my first confession. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, a little, a little tip, a little heads up though, uh, to put your mind at ease. It's technically not fully country. Yeah, it's rock. Um, I can I consider it technical term apparently the new genre that's that's really booming in the industry now is called Americana. Uh -huh. um, so it's like a twist of southern rock, blues rock. Um, a good comparison who is my favorite solo artist is Chris Stapleton. Um, I love him. He's amazing. He's a prime example of Americana music and that's the direction I'm going to. I wouldn't consider myself fully country only because I'm noticing that it's definitely leaning towards more pop now these days. Mm -hmm. And that's just not, <laughs> that's just not who I am. I appreciate it. I mean, that's anyone why I, I don't enjoy it because of that new country, you could call it, I guess, although it's been around for a decade. Yeah, but uh, when I think of some stuff, some songs I really enjoy, it's it's more a little bit about the older stuff that I can really mm -hmm. see how it, it helps shape and contribute to rock and roll to modern rock. Yes. Rock and roll. Yeah, so I, I was wondering, one of the questions I had was, you know, would you have wanted to be a performer in any other part of history of country? Or is this the perfect time for you? Like, would you have been like, you know, maybe Johnny Cash, young Dolly Parton era, or is this the perfect time for Sid to be in music? Hmm. That's, that, that's a good question. I think the perfect time for me, yes, is now, because I really get to create music that speaks to me on, on an authentic level. And I get to write my truth. Whereas before, a few years ago, I was diving way more into country and I noticed that it wasn't fully me. The Southern aspect of it for sure was me, but I wouldn't say that with the pop and everything that's integrating into country right now, I don't fit. I'm too edgy, I'm too dark. I've been told I'm more of a rock star than anything. So yes, I would say this is this is the perfect time. I'm everything happens for a reason and this is meant to be the way it is. However, <laughs> little little another confession here. Um, I love 70s rock. Led Zeppelin is my favorite band of all time. And if I had to go back to an era for music, I would love to have been a 70s rock star. So. Oh. That's cool. I'll, I always like to go back and get your origin story. I, I want to see when the spark of music ignited mm -hmm. into the fire that we have behind us here. So yes, you're two years old in the back of your mom's car listening to stuff, but maybe you're, maybe you're flipping through your parents' album collection or, or cassettes or CDs was there a time where music went from something you heard to something you felt where you, you just said, I want to do this. Like, this is, this is insane. And maybe oftentimes it's not even a, what our parents are listening to. We kind of find our own brand of music, maybe through an older sibling. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, you're, you don't have siblings. You're it's the only thing that's common. We're both the only children, but uh, maybe from an aunt or an uncle, is there a time or a, a band or a song that did that for you? See, now that's, that's a very difficult question to answer for me because that it's, there wasn't, I don't remember a time where it's like, this is what I'm meant to do. It's always been like that. Ever since I started being able to sing, it's always kind of been like that. I remember when I was six, seven, um, I would listen to a lot of Amanda Marshall with my mother in the car, Jewel, Dido, <laughs> all these uh, old school, uh, early 2000 artists. And I, I remember loving it and getting chills every time my mother and I would sing along to a chorus. 
but I, I have to say, like, I've never had that moment where it's like, this is what I'm meant to do. Cause it's always been like that for me ever since I started being able to write my first poem, write my first okay, song. Let, let's, let's, let's talk, talk about that. I'm going to set the scene. You're seven years old. You have mm. a fight with your friend and you write something. Was that the first time that you really put your, your thoughts yeah. your into words? And, and what were what, what were the emotions you're having at that time that kind of went into that poem? Yeah, it's actually really funny that you use that scenario because that's exactly when I wrote, that's how I wrote my first song. I remember my friend and I, we were friends since four months old. So it's it, it, lifetime. Kind of lifelong friends, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And I remember at age eight or nine um her and I had a, a huge fight our first really big fight and I remember feeling really heartbroken but also very angry and betrayed and I remember because I was just writing poems at the time so I wrote a poem about about the experience about how angry I was at her how I thought our friendship meant more than that we're like sisters and then I remember <laughs> this melody in my head at a certain line that I wrote. And I remember going, oh, well, okay, what, what's happening here? And I didn't really understand it fully because I, I, never, I never wrote a song at that time. So I, I started just kind of singing along to my lyrics and my mother turned and she goes, what are you doing? And, and, I'm, and I said, well, I'm, I'm writing a song about my friend because you know I'm, I'm really upset and I need to let it out somehow and I don't know how to let it out so this is how I'm letting it out and my mom goes that's really good so I guess that's when the songwriting aspect came into play for sure and I remember feeling really excited that I actually was able to create a melody to lyrics that 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 gave me chills and I get I get this sor sort of body ecstasy feeling whenever that happens even to this day I still just get chills running through me just because of how connected and magical it feels to be able to write a song that or, really or to release something and see it as a concrete thing that you can put out in the world it's absolutely I think I've always thought of my songs as my children um you know, I get to watch them grow from being just a lyric to being a full on recorded song with a band and everything playing on radio or playing on Spotify. It's really, it's a really vulnerable and empowering experience because I, I not only get to show my artistry to the world, which is very exciting, but I'm also showing a part of me that was at a very vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very, intimate moment for me so it's cool though it's very cool i want to touch on one of your songs um from a previous release is uh cheaters yeah. and and you're gonna have my second confession after this um uh, why is our relationship with ourselves sometimes more important than that with others mm. through my experience uh with a recent relationship, hence the song Cheaters. <laughs> um, last year was really tough. I officially ended it with that person. And with COVID and everything coming into play, I had to sit with my feelings for a while. I had to sit with the pain, the, the suffering, the uh, loneliness, but I find that with that pain comes a certain amount of courage. And last year was definitely a year of discovering the, the beauty of being with myself and connecting with myself. I didn't really hang out with a lot of my friends. I wanted to kind of be on my own for a bit. I went on for like a lot of hikes. Hiking is my thing. I did a road trip. 
um, around BC. And I really got to learn how to enjoy my own company and how to embrace, you know, having conversations with myself in the car. Like I would literally sit and talk to myself, observing people around me, other cars driving next to me. And I would just, I noticed how much fun I had and how I would laugh with myself, how I would sing as loud as I can to like some songs on in the car. Uh, it was really nice just getting to know myself again. You know, you put your, you put so much energy and so much of yourself into a relationship that at the end of the day wasn't really worth it. And sometimes you can lose yourself to that relationship. So last year was really about rebuilding for me and reconnecting with myself. And if anything, I think I'm much more close to myself than I've ever been. Um, I also think a huge important part about having that relationship with yourself is I'm a firm believer as cheesy as it sounds no matter how much you try to love someone, if you do not love yourself more, you know, it, it's not going to work out. It's going to be a toxic relationship. I, I feel I had like, a feeling I, that's what you're going to say. Yeah. Like, and I, I feel like, I feel like relationships, whether it's a friendship, any sort of connection, it's simply a reflection of the relationship you have with yourself. So if you don't have a very healthy relationship with yourself, if there's a lot of insecurity and self-hate, you're going to be in relationships with people or friendships with people who are going to confirm that feeling by treating you just as bad as you do to yourself. And I think one thing that you've experienced growing up is bullying. And I think mm -hmm. that the same principles, those bullies, don't love themselves so nope. they project that onto others and and hurt them i i've, I've experienced bullying in my past uh, yeah. sure you have as well yeah I, I and you know i wish if i could go back to my younger self i wish i could say to myself you know when a bully is when a bully is bullying you it really has nothing to do with you they're just projecting the hate and the self-loathing that they're experiencing within themselves, they're just projecting it on other people and you happen to be in the crossfire. Here's you my know? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, all I was just gonna say is, but at the same time, I wouldn't go back and change anything because the bullying and all that that I experienced, it simply made me more stronger. It's like a muscle where you tear it when you exercise and it just rebuilds stronger and stronger. Yeah. Tear strong, tear strong, strength. Here's my second confession, which kind of goes along with all this. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I grew up as the kid that would wear a t-shirt at the pool because I didn't want people to, I don't know. I felt like the t-shirt maybe hid that I was overweight. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up uh, with that body image issue, which is something that uh, a lot of people have, and I think social media is making that more and more difficult. Uh, oh, yeah. How, what's your take on that? Uh, I, I think some of your songs kind of uh, play with that about accepting yourself. How important that is to you? Very important. Um, I relate to your situation immensely. When I was a teenager, still to this day, to be real with you, I don't like showing my arms. I wear, I wear long sleeve, I wear cardigans, I wear jackets, anything to cover my arms. I've always been insecure with my arms. Uh, I dealt with a lot of body issues at a young age. So I relate to that on a, on a really deep level. And I think a lot of my pain and emotional suffering was kind of depending on my body issues. That was a way for a while of how to express my pain was taking it out on my body. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna say to 
to anybody, any young woman, woman, or a man, anyone uh, who ever feels that way about their body. A couple things I want to say first, your body is a part of you. Your body is your vessel that carries the most important, meaningful, deep part of you, which is your soul, your personality, who you are truly as just a being. Your vessel is there to carry you and to comfort you, to shelter you and protect you from everything that could possibly hurt that. And what I've learned through my pain, why would you want to hurt something or judge something that is simply trying to support you? Honor that, honor that, honor that relationship with your body. And there are going to be times when you don't want to accept it, where you're going to have thoughts. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay to feel that. It's okay to think that way. But always come back to reminding yourself, my body is here to support me. And the better you treat it, you will feel better about it. You just have to honor that part of you by feeding it good food, giving it the rest it needs. Just honor that relationship because it's, it's simply only there to support the substance of you. And I think probably the most dangerous thing people do today is they compare themselves to others or the media's projection of what a man or a woman uh, or whoever you wanna be, uh, mm -hmm. that, that image of that perfect person, it just doesn't exist. And it we're doesn't gonna attain it. So it's just why yeah. there are good things that you can do in your life to be healthy but don't try to, you know, ascend to that level because it's, it's Photoshop. There's no way we can Photoshop real life. Well, yeah. And I just want to say, I'm, I also am a makeup artist and I do a lot of photography in the fashion industry. So when I dove into that industry, I, I did realize how fake it all is. You know, you, some people might believe that, okay, yeah, they retouch it. But I really want to let people know to believe, to really believe it because it's all retouched. The mm -hmm. skin is retouched. Even the body is retouched. It, it, it's a really, it's, it's an ugly and it's a beautiful world in that industry. It's ugly because the side effect it gives to people who aren't in that industry, people just assume that that's what this model looks like. I want people to understand in that industry, it's simply, you know, a lot of it was yes, to make people look perfect, but a lot of it is also telling a story. The model is simply playing a character uh, for that shoot, which is a story, an art. It's no different than a painter painting, you know, that they are just creating an image that is, a, is an expression of their artistry. It has nothing to do with how they view people and how people should be. Some of them are for sure, but those people will not succeed going forward. They never do. So I don't want, I, I just really don't want people taking that on because I used to take it on until I went into the industry and I really understood. Eyes are open. And, yeah. And a lot of these models are very down to earth people because a lot of them suffered through being judged and tormented about their body. So it, 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 reminds, <laughs> yeah. it, it reminds me of actors who play like a bad person or the villain. And in real life, people like, they, they'll yell at them in the street and they're like, I'm just an actor. Like this is just a script. I mean, just, it's just a mask I put on for an hour. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like though, you know, in the social media world, um, it's becoming more, like people are more aware of the problem. And a lot of, I mean, it's amazing. Paris has now created a, a law where a model can't be underweight for their body. Mm -hmm. So there's a specific weight that they really? have to be. Yeah, so they can't get into a runway show or anything like that They unless they are at a healthy weight for their body. So because everyone has a certain height 
or weight that they need to be in order to be healthy. No one's the same, right? So given their proportions, their weight has to be healthy for their proportions in order to be accepted into runway. Now, let's not say that they're still gonna go at the lowest that they can go for their health, but it's getting somewhere. The point is, is that they are not taking anorexic women because they want to let women know and people around the world know that this is not right to hurt and harm your body simply for a runway show, simply to be accepted. It's not a part of it anymore. It kind of goes with a running theme that I've seen uh, with you is confidence. Uh, Confidence, uh, we've talked about it in certain ways about body image. Mm -hmm. Confidence also to release your music to the world. Confidence to get on stage. What to you is the biggest contributor to your confidence to make Mm -hmm. it to where you are today? I feel like I've... I have been at such a low place in my life before that I now believe that nothing can really get worse than that. So having that inner belief that I've already been at my lowest, so nothing ever is, nothing will get lower than that. I'm a strong person, you know, I've, I've battled through a lot of emotions. I felt a lot of things and I came back up confident and feeling better. So if I can do that, I'm a firm believer that I can get through life, being happy, finding joy and passion. And I know that music has always been there to create joy and self-confidence and self-love for me. So again, no different than my relationship with my body. I need to honor that relationship by going on stage and performing and just being me. And I also feel like the stage is more of a home for me than my own home. Uh, When I go on stage, there's this certain, there's a certain boost of energy that comes into me, whether it's adrenaline, whatever you want to call it. It, it creates this, like I'm in a zone. I'm, I'm kind of in a trance. I don't even really see the audience sometimes because I'm just so in the moment. And to me, it's not even about looking good. I want to look good for sure, but it's not about that for me. For me, it's about, okay, I'm here to sing a song to an audience and really showcase what that song's about. You know, I'm an interpreter. It's no different than a model doing their photo shoot. It's no different than an actor acting in their movie. I'm simply just interpreting this song, especially the one that I've written and letting the audience know what it's about. And I just want the audience to feel, I want the audience to connect, um, to relate. That's my, my number one goal. uh, And I think when you go all in, that's when time stops and, Mm -hmm. and you sometimes I'm not, I'm not a performer, but I've, from the interviews I've had, I, I've talked to some performers where they, it's almost as if they blacked out. They, they come yeah. to the end of their show and it's as if they were not even there. They're so, yeah. they just gave everything. And those are the best shows. Mm-hmm. And yet for others, they're fully in the moment. So it, it depends on the person. It's, for some, it's like time slows because they're just, just living. It's really weird. It's like two different ways to, to experience a, a, a live show. You seem to be, the one that just kind of uh, yeah. goes all in and and, ex- and almost uh, just gives it your all. And, and you, that's what you're like, I mean, you're known to be on fire on stage. <laughs> people like, I mean, I just heard your voice a couple of times. I just got to know you, uh, but it, it's, it's, an, it's insane. It's, it's just really strong, uh, which kind of goes towards that, that confidence that you're allowed your voice to speak for you in a very strong way. And I, I, I think that's one of the things that, is making you uh, just endearing and, and to, to the and, and gathering more and more fans and, and listeners and my own take. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think, you know, it's no different than how people interpret, you know, what a perfect body should be like. Confidence doesn't have to look like a certain way, you know? I feel like 
confidence is simply just a result to just being you and being unapologetic about being you, just being, you know, really embracing who you are as a person, not really thinking too much about how people are going to respond to that, just being who you are and showing it and people are either going to take it in or they're not. And that's not your problem, regardless if they take it in or not. You're just speaking you. <laughs> speaking about you, you once said, I'm an open book. If so, what is the title of that book right now? So <laughs> I don't, I don't want to put a title on anything. In fact, if, if I have to call it, if I have to call it the book of unknown, I will. Um, I don't like putting a title on anything. I, I think we live in a world now where putting labels on anything is not really necessary. So I don't really want to put a title or a label on my book. I just kind of want to leave it open and let it be what it is. And, you know, you don't want to judge a book by its cover anyway. So I don't think the title really matters. Great answer. You just nailed that one. <laughs> you have your own line of shot glasses. Customized shot I do. I do. So I don't know what's in them. Uh, that I, That's another question I'd like to find out. What would you put in that shot glass for yourself? Mm -hmm. but let's say that you and I are having a shot mm -hmm. from those glasses one year from now to celebrate something you've just accomplished. What would that be? And what's in the glass? So yes, I have, I have a double shot glass. I'm, it's not a single normal shot glass. It's a tall one. And I always love putting my whiskey in that. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Jack Daniels honey fan or Jack Daniels fire. Cause it's, it's like a fireball, but it's not as sugary. So I, I, I think I just found your sponsor for this release. Yeah. So no, seriously. Hey, uh, but yeah, I'm a huge Jack Daniels fire fan. Um, it's so good. And the other, the other part of the question was We're what celebrating I something a year from now that you just right. accomplished. What will that be? I can't tell the future. <laughs> I don't know what that Where is. Do you want to be, be one year from now. Well, like what's the, what's a, a year nice from now that you have. I think a year from now, having my album out, having people love it and, uh, and really relate to it. I want to tour so bad. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to travel again and see different cities. So I would love to go on the road. And I, I hope that when you and I have a, a shot together, it's because I just finished my big tour and my name's getting out there and people are really digging my sound. That's all I hope for right now. And I will be introduced to the nuances of country music and this new style of Americana. The last thing I wanna do, I wanna play a little game with you. This is going on way longer than I thought it would. I was expecting 20 <laughs> minutes, but you're such an amazing person to talk to. I think we could go on for hours. So, but let's just do one last thing. Uh, it's a little game I like to call a fantasy rock band or it could be fantasy country band. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've probably heard of fantasy football, fantasy hockey, or us Canadians. Uh, I like, I'm more of a music guy. So let's create the ultimate fantasy rock or country band. I need a singer, guitarist, bassist, and drummer. And if you want to add a horn section or a mandolin player, banjo player, whatever you want, let's create the ultimate band, your choice. Hmm. Okay. Singer Chris Stapleton, his voice is so powerful. And I think that's just, yeah, that's the singer. I also think Jimmy Page should be on guitar. I had a feeling. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. 
Are you going to contribute or is this just all me? It's all you. This is, this is a uh, question. I'm not going to tell you why until the end. <sighs> um, oh, man, who are some good bassists out there? Well, I'm just going to put my bassist because I think he's amazing, Rob Becker. He's unreal. He's been in the industry for a long time. So I'm going to put him as the bassist because he's amazing. Drummer, Pat Stewart, come on. He did Brian Adams with Summer 69. So I got to give that to him. What else? What else do we need in a band? Well, uh, else <laughs> you can have backup singer. You can do a duet with someone. Mm, Stevie Nicks should be in there. For, for at least a secondary singer. Because Fleetwood Mac was amazing and she did an amazing job, so. The reason why this is a trick question is because instead of asking to me, which is the most boring question in the world is who are your influences? I play fantasy rock band and I get to find out who your influences are without asking the question that's not right. a good question. So, <laughs> well, they're all in there. So to me, to me, it shows like a little bit more on the rock side, on the alternative side. And of course, you bring those influences of that country vibe and, and the power of your voice. But with this deep, you know, hidden little secret that you do love rock and roll. And it shows. I do. I really do. November 3rd, the song comes out. Uh, whether you like the stuff or not, check it out uh you're going to be at least I, mean, I love the intro the intro to me is the best it just kind of just starts us off with the right frame of mind and then your voice comes in and just kills it so thank you so much we can't we look forward to uh releasing this with you and uh thanks so much for being on the show thank you so much randall you'll find everything on my social medias all under sid carter west that will be in our article Thank you. Thank you.